Mysterious landlocked country very few people visit. It's lush, it's tropical, and it's brimming with wildlife. It has a vibrant, heartwarming, and beautiful local culture. There are endless exciting adventurous activities. Great street food. And some of Asia's most beautiful night markets. But is Lao a good place to travel with your family? Because it's all so much for dropping by if this is your first time please hit that subscribe button join the family come and join us on our adventure around the world today we're exploring lao lao oh by the way it looks like it's laos but it's lao you don't pronounce the s and lao lao is a really good drink so lao um lao is a special place to me i went backpacking there over 10 years ago and when i set off backpacking i was pretty naive I thought, wow, I will travel the world because nobody's ever done that before. And I will discover amazing places where people have never seen white people before. They'll be so the first one there. Of course, that didn't happen a lot. It happened once though. It happened once in Laos. So Laos is a very special place for me. And I will tell you more about that strange, awkward, but exciting story a bit later. So Laos is nestled away in the center of Southeast Asia. So it's surrounded by Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam and China just above it. And it's a beautiful landlocked country. It's a country that not a lot of people know a lot about and yet there's so much to do there. It's an absolute hidden gem. But in this video, we're taking you on a journey and because it's more of a guide, we're gonna keep it real with you. We wanna show you the good and the bad, but we're also gonna give you tips along the way and give you a really good idea of what it's like to travel this country. So on a practical note, as we go through, we're going to cover weather, money, language, visas, transport, healthcare, safety, what to pack, what kind of stuff you can get out there, what it's like with um, a sling or a pram, what it's like with toilets, baby change, that kind of thing. And we'll give you a very honest insight into the Laos attitude towards families and family travel, because really that's one of the most important things the country's attitude towards you as a traveling family when you're there. Okay, let's start with Kung Si Waterfall. Kung Si Waterfall is beautiful. It's one of the main places that you'll want to visit when you're traveling around Laos. This waterfall is so much fun. It really is the perfect family day out. It's just on the outskirts of Luang Prabang and you can reach it by Tuk Tuk or minivan very easily. Lao has so many beautiful swimming holes. So you have this gorgeous one over in Luang Prabang, but then over in Vang Bien, you have these incredible blue lagoons. Jumping on a bicycle and heading out to find a secret blue lagoon turned into a memory that will last a lifetime. It was the most incredible story as it unfolded. So much so, we're gonna make a video just on this incredible experience itself. So make sure you tune in next week to get the in-depth story of what really happened when we cycled out of Bang Vien. Bang Vien is super famous for tubing. And yes, 10 years ago, I jumped in a tube drank too much out of a bucket, had an accidental, genuinely accidental cheeky brownie and jumped on these inner tubes with a load of other crazy people that were traveling very irresponsibly, I have learned a bit since, and jumped in their inner tube and sailed down a river. It was pretty crazy. 
and pretty stupid. And I'm really glad we went back and did it in a nicer way. So now what you can do, you can go tubing, but it's done in a different way. And we actually explored inside a cave in a tube. And then we went zip lining and you can also rock climb and kayak. Bang Vien has so much going on for it. It's such an incredible adventure. It's like the adventure capital of Lao. Oh. Lao has a beautiful culture of dedicated monks living in gorgeous temples. They are part of daily life. We stayed next to one of their home temples in Bang Vien. You can see them early morning in pretty much any town in Lao. We actually met a few monks whilst we were travelling and it was funny to just find out that they were as curious about us as we were about them. So don't forget the human. You can take photos, you can film, just do so respectfully. The following day, we headed out to an elephant sanctuary and it was really precious. It was so precious. They genuinely look after the elephants, they give them loads of space. When we arrived, the Mahout had to disappear off to find the elephants and then give us an idea. And we had to trek a few miles to go and find the elephants. And they're so well looked after and that really is so important. And it was our baby boy's first real encounter with an elephant. It was just so special. I still think about what we had when we were younger. We were never running out of time. As long as we had each other, oh, everything was black and white. Driving in a car, never knowing how far we go. When we were young. Sneak into a parent's house I could stay for hours And we looked into each other's eyes Hey, I thought I was Romeo I was looking for my Juliet And as soon as I left I told my friends Those days made me When we were younger, we were never running out of time As long as we had each other, oh, everything was black and white First real encounter with an elephant the first trip to Lao, I also went to this incredible archaeology site called Plain of Jars There's thousands of these huge jars just spread out and there's various theories about whether they're for tombs or there's a few different theories running around but you just have to go see it it's absolutely incredible and they make for great silly photos too but they are these huge stone jars there's no don't know how else to explain it it's a, a plane of jars <laughs> it's definitely worth seeing it is a little bit off the beaten track you do have to travel inland um, but if you have the time go see it it's just incredible Something that's much easier to get to. If you're in the capital of Yentian, there's a place called Buddha Park and you can jump on a local bus and that's what we did. We jumped on a local bus and we head up to Buddha Park and it was incredible. There's loads of really cool statues. You don't need long there, a couple of hours max. That's if you're taking photos. You could walk around it in technically probably at a pace in 10 minutes. Um, but if you're taking your time, there is quite a lot to see and take photos of. So that is really beautiful. We really enjoyed it and this is crazy strange big thing where you walk into a huge mouth it's where you can get a really cool photo but you walk into this huge mouth and it takes you up the spiral and eventually you can stand on top but do be careful always trying to be cool trying to be those bad guys smoking cigarettes behind the school always trying to be cool it's being a mum, isn't it? Like, I've never been like bothered about heights and now, like, oh, get back, get back. I can totally picture, I really want to be like a really cool mum and just be like, yeah, enjoy yourself. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. And actually, 
And there's something about being a mum that makes you so much more aware of edges. I mentioned Vientiane as the capital. It's more like a sleepy little town. It's on the river and it just doesn't feel like a big city, which is kind of nice. I like that. There's loads of great food everywhere. Lao food is a bit like Thai food, but it's got its own little twist. It is very tasty and I highly recommend it. Very fresh. Stretching up into the north of Laos, you have Lang Nam Tha, and that's that incredible place that I made my way to all those years ago, and I, I will tell you that story, bear with me. And then if you stretch down into the south of Laos, it's quite a funny country, a funny shaped country. Um, you get down to the Mekong, and they actually have pink dolphins, and there's a place called Pak Se that you want to watch out for. And that's a really good base to then start heading towards 4,000 islands, which is as beautiful as it sounds. The weather. Laos is basically hot and dry, hot and wet. But I would say that if you're heading up north, I was really caught out. I found that right up in the north, in the mountains, um, in the morning, when I was getting up for a local Lao coffee, I had to put extra layers on. So do make sure you've got at least one or two warm layers, but typically most of Laos that you're going to get to is going to be fairly hot. So just prepare for that. Money. The local currency is kip. I really like that kip. And uh, for about a pound, you get over 10,000 kip. And so do check your change, it's really hard to get mixed up with it and you can be a millionaire very quickly with this kind of money. Lao is mostly good value, um, it's it's not quite as good value as Thailand and Cambodia but it's not expensive, you do get a lot for your money. You don't have to barter as hard but still do barter, on the whole it's really good value for money. Visas, if you're from the UK and most western countries it's $35 for a visa and you can get visa on arrival. You can get them in advance um, at embassies. As far as I know, there's still no e-visa at the point of making this video. Um, but the best way is just to arrive and get visa on arrival. That's what we did and it's really straightforward. The bad news is even your baby has to have a visa. So babies, children, everyone has to pay 35 US dollars. It's always handy to carry US dollars. I can't recommend enough. If you're going to Southeast Asia or pretty much anywhere that you're traveling, make sure that you have US dollars. Language. The local language is Lao. And they do speak English, um, but the English is mostly spoken in guest houses and cafes and maybe the bigger towns. But you quickly run into people that don't speak English and they're very polite, very sweet, but English isn't that widespread. Wi-Fi and Sims. The Wi-Fi is pretty slow and you can get Sims and that will give you a bit of connectivity on the go, but don't rely on it too strongly. I wouldn't... Laos is the kind of place you unplug a little bit. You can get Wi-Fi and there are hotels and cafes that have it. You have to be quite intentional about going to the places that have it. It's not quite as modernised and Wi-Fi dies, doesn't really make sense, um, as Thailand. Accommodation. So again, for accommodation, um, you don't get quite as good value for your money as Thailand and Cambodia. Those two places are amazing. Um, accommodation is typically pretty clean and simple. You don't have to worry too much. You will get a family room quite easily. Um, for around, I'd say five to ten pound is kind of probably closer to ten pound is your starting price for a simple room that'll have a shower and a bed and maybe a third bed. Accommodation in Laos, we just looked at basic accommodation whilst we were there. It didn't feel like it was worth paying loads more for. There are some incredible luxury places and we have heard of people staying in those and living those and we'll put links to a range of accommodations but we didn't stay either in. Um, you can get these like little bamboo guest houses and they're the super cheap option, super simple. I quite like sleeping on the floor, it works well for having a baby. And so something like that wouldn't even be more than £10. For around £10, £10-12, you're looking at a simple room that'll have hot water, probably a double and a single bed in most cases. It's... I wouldn't really go all out on spending your money on accommodation in Laos. If you're wanting a luxury stay, I would head to Thailand or Cambodia. But don't worry, you will just get simple, good family rooms and your money will go quite far in Laos. Booking.com and Agoda are both fantastic for Laos, so just use one of those, have a little look. You can get your accommodation book in advance. In the high season, things do book up, especially the better ones. Food. I love food so much and the food in Laos is delicious. It's typically pretty fresh, pretty healthy. It's somewhere between, it is literally somewhere between physically and foodily. It's somewhere between um, Vietnam and Thailand. And you'll just find that it's, if you know what Vietnamese food is like, and Thai food is like, like the spring rolls and the noodles and the fresh fruit, that kind of thing, that's what you're going to be getting. It is really good food. Transport. Transport is mostly, um, you've got tuk-tuks, bicycles, you do a lot of walking. Bicycle, I think bicycling around Laos is just the thing to do. It's so beautiful. It is the best way to go and see the rivers and the mountains and the temples. 
it's just a beautiful way to get around. So I would really recommend bicycling. For the longer distances, they do do overnight buses, but I wouldn't recommend them. We did an overnight bus with our baby and it was a really, really horrible mess. So um, it was on these windy roads. We never get travel sick and we were on the back of this bus trying to sleep. <laughs> that was going to happen. And um, with our baby, he was he got upset. He woke up um, and we actually had a bit of a fallout. It happens on the road. Said we'd be honest with you guys. It just was an intense, horrible situation. We both felt travel sick. And for people that don't get travel sick, it was really annoying to be in this cramped little space with an upset baby. It just wasn't very nice. I wouldn't recommend the overnight buses in um, in Laos. But in, in general, I'm not against overnight buses with a family. I think it's actually quite a good option. But on mountainous roads, I just wouldn't go there. You can get minibuses during the day. And really, um, depending on how small your children are, I would seriously consider flying around Laos if you have to either day buses or flying around. The problem with day buses is you lose the time, but then you do save the money. So you know what your itinerary is like and your budget's like. Things in prams are both fine. We met some really cool families um, pramming here to rocking the pram. Um, we tend to use the sling and uh, both are totally possible. And um, it's that usual thing where it's like, if you take a sling, you're gonna sweat, but you're more maneuverable and uh, more flexible with where you can go. And you know, if you take a pram, then it can be a bit difficult getting the pram around, but at least then you're not attached to the sweating. So it's up to you, both are possible. Safety, I feel super safe whenever I'm in Laos. It's just a beautiful, gentle, simple culture. It seems a lot less thievy and it seems a lot less scammy. And it's just, I'm sure these things, I'm sure people do get stolen from and do get scammed, but on the whole, there's not a culture of it. It's just quite a relaxed, chilled out culture, it's really nice. Health wise, you do have to be aware of malaria and dengue. So make sure you sort your meds out and um, check out um, what jabs you need. Make sure your jabs are up to date. It is a tropical country. So these things are always a consideration. The hospitals, I've heard really mixed things about. We haven't had to use the hospitals firsthand. I always say if you're in Southeast Asia, get to Bangkok. If it's serious, just get to Bangkok. If it's not serious, you can get pretty much everything over the counter in Southeast Asia. Um, and that's up to you where you stand with that. Um, we have, when we lived out there, we had to self-diagnose quite a lot and we had friends um, who are doctors by email trying to give us the best advice. But really, when it comes to your family, if it's anything serious, just get a flight to Bangkok. And as always, make sure you have good travel insurance. I can't emphasize this enough. Insurance, oh, that's so boring, but so essential. So we've made a video that breaks down the kind of travel insurance you need and what you need to be looking for as a family. So if you haven't already seen our video, we'll put it here and here. Check it out and make sure that you have good travel insurance. Toilets, yay, potty talk again. Okay, so toilets are basically mostly squatty, but you do get Western toilets as well. It depends where you are. Baby change isn't really a thing. You just have to get inventive. We usually end up using whatever bed we're sleeping on with a scarf underneath. We did take a changing mat on our first Southeast Asia trip. They're great, they're compact. Um, you just have to get creative if you are traveling with a, a little baby and you're having to change nappies. Um, sometimes just a, a shady spot on the grass somewhere is all you're going to get, um, which isn't the worst thing, a bit of jingle nappy changing. Supplies, um, so in terms of like your nappies, um, wet wipes, I'm forgetting what you need. Nappies, wet wipes, dummies, um, all that kind of thing, milk, um, snacks that are pre-wrapped. That kind of stuff you can get in Laos. It's not super widespread, but there are supermarkets in the main towns that you're going to be going to, and you can stock up there. So I would say for Laos, pack your own, but don't panic. If you need these things last minute, they will have them in the shops in Laos. Packing. We are working on a video on how to pack as a family going to a hot country, because there are a lot of things to think about. We always say, take hand sanitizer. Of course, you're going to need sunscreen, mosquito repellent, and shampoo. When you're taking those kind of things, Make sure that you just take the baby version. If you have a baby, just get the baby version and use it for all the family. We find it's actually usually more sensitive and better for you anyway. But it's a really good way to pack more light, to pack more lightly. Slings and prams. This is a big consideration. We love the sling because it's compact and it gives us loads of flexibility. But we've met people with prams that do an amazing job with them and they totally rock the pram and they get everywhere with them as well. So it's up to you. You know what you're more comfortable with. At some point, we will do a video on this too. If you have a baby, I really recommend the baby mosquito nets. Um, there's two types. You have the super duper budget glorified laundry basket type thing with a zip. And um, that is less than a tenner. And we went for that one and it broke by the trip. It actually died just at the last bit. We were having to like slowly zip it and the zip was breaking. Um, so 
that is fine if you've got a short one-off trip that's up to you um i have heard that the arc is fantastic and actually if we're traveling in these areas again i would seriously consider the arc the big question what is laos attitude towards families traveling amazing another amazing country they are so super sweet everywhere we went i really mean just about everywhere as soon as we interacted with the local it was the funniest quirk and i always tell people about this they would give them a banana even if they had to run to something or go get it off another person we just found for some reason and it was so sweet we ended up with so many bananas they would go out of their way to make sure they gave our baby boy a banana or two or even a bunch to the point where our bag was full of them it sounds really bad but we started eating them too and even then we couldn't get through them so we're feeding our baby bananas we were, we're just going bananas so Lao, the people of Lao are super kind and super sweet about families we felt really we felt really welcomed and encouraged being there as a family so i can't recommend it for families enough it's amazing oh i was going to tell you my amazing travel story this story is so super cool so going back 10 years i ventured into lao and instead of going south where most of the backpackers were going i headed north to a place called lang nam tha that's in the north and it is beautiful and it feels off the beaten track as soon as you get up there I haven't been back but I really want to go back in the future. I'm thinking when our children are old I want to go back and trek with them. So <laughs> the story is crazy. I met up with a few of the travellers and we decided we wanted to explore, um, there is a national park but we just wanted to explore lesser known parts and so we found some local guys that had kayaks and we later found out that it's the first time they'd ever taken Barang um, foreigners with them and so they were totally winging it and the short version, if, the short version, is that we um, we went with them. They took us to a market. We jumped in some kayaks and headed downstream. They didn't really know where they were going either. We didn't find this out until later. Um, it was this amazing adventure. The first place that we arrived, they went ahead, and we realised they'd had this conversation where they said to the chief in the village, um, basically, can we give you a bit of money to stay with you for the night? And once we got talking and we were around the campfire because it did actually get cool up there once we were talking um it came out that we were only the third people in the history of that village ever seeing white people which explains why we were staring so much the next day we jumped back on the kayaks and we headed further down i always thought if you were the first white person people had seen it would be this really hollywood romantic moment it wasn't it was really awkward. So we jumped back in our kayaks and we carried on down the river. We now know that our guides were actually winging it and trying to find a safe place to get us back to a road and try and get us back to Lang Nam Tha. And we were miles down this river. But um, on this riverside, some young children came running down and so they pulled into there. So we took our kayaks over and these children screamed and not like funny scream, like just screamed and ran away. They ran back up the hill and, this, and then they came running back and a few more came with them. And the kayaks had these giant green inflatable kayaks and they were freaking them out as much as we were, I think. Have you ever played What Time Is It Mr. Wolf? That's what happened for, to us. So we were trying to walk up the shore. We were wet, we hadn't been very good at kayak and we were drenched trying to walk away. As we walked towards them, every time we stopped, they stopped. And it's just this really funny game. And one cute little guy, this little tinker, probably the size of our baby now, and he ran over, he was a brave one, and poked the kayak and ran away. And, um, and everybody giggled and that kind of broke the ice. But even still, people were just staring and every time we stopped, they stopped. It was just such a strange situation. When we got further up there, they had actually managed to contact some people to come and collect us. And we were drenched and trying to get changed. We tried to go around the back of it to get changed, and a big chunk of the village kind of followed us around and then so we were like trying to move around and um so yeah we didn't get a lot of privacy they were really curious to see us and it was just it was strange i remember this older woman just staring at me really staring and i mean to me she looked like something out of national geographic she had one of those really weathered leather wizard wisdom filled faces and she was staring. i was like wow like i just wonder what she's thinking i wonder what she's seen and as we were talking to the guys later, again, they explained that in this village, they had never seen white people before. So it turns out when it happens, you get stared at a lot, as you would imagine, but you also scare them a bit. So that was me. That was a dream travel experience in some ways to actually be the first to do that. I don't know if it's still possible, 
and I'm totally planning to go back when my little ones are less little and go trekking and kayaking and see if we can find places like that in the north of Lao. Not a lot of people go there. Okay, so that was the story. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. We love getting to know you. I'm super stoked to get to know you guys. If we want to know more about your travels. Feel free to ask us questions and let's just keep getting together every week for tips and giggles. See you again soon.